We know that Sir Francis Drake is real, and we have reports of a salvage team actually being close to finding his lead coffin. Now, all we need to know is, is his treasure still out there? Throughout the Uncharted games, we see Nathan Drake searching for something while always wearing his silver ring. Legend to have once belonged to Sir Francis Drake, and we never think anything of it. It's just a game with a great story and decent replayability. But if you stop and dig into this a bit more, you find that Nathan Drake was sometimes searching for something real. So let's get into who Sir Francis Drake was and is, and how close to reality some of the Uncharted games were. Are you sure you want to be defiling your ancestors' remains like that? You can't defile an empty coffin. What the- Sir Francis Drake was known for his circumnavigation of the world in a single expedition from 1577 to 1588. He was an English sea captain, privateer, naval officer, and explorer. In 1581, he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth I and appointed mayor of Plymouth. To his peers, the English, he was looked at like a victorious hero and adventurer. But to the Spanish, he was seen as a fiend and a pirate. In fact, he was believed to be so successful that the Spanish didn't believe any normal human was capable of the exploits on his own. They believed Sir Francis Drake had made a pact with the devil and nicknamed him El Drac, which means the dragon. He was born in 1540 Tavistock, Devon, England, and died at the age of 56 in Portobello, Cologne, Panama. So you may be wondering, if he was a navy officer and a sea captain, how come he's being viewed as a pirate to the Spanish? Well, he was also a privateer, and if you're unsure of what that means, it's basically when the official government of his country says, here's some money, here's a ship, here's some guns, go out and be a pirate in the name of England, and we got your back. Just bring us the gold. He had made life so difficult for the Spanish that he had a bounty on his head which in today's money would be worth $8.8 .8 million. So what is it that he took from these other ships that made him so valuable? Well there's actually several answers to that question but we'll focus on what's known as Nombre de Dios Silver Train. In 1572 Drake led his first independent mission to attack the town of Nombre de Dios in the Isthmus of Panama from where the Spanish would load the gold and silver treasures of Peru onto galleons to be sent back into Spain. They succeeded in capturing the town and its treasures, and remained in the area for almost a year carrying out raids on the Spanish and attempting to capture more treasure shipments. In 1573 he attacked a silver train to Nombre de Dios, where they captured the haul of approximately 20 tons of silver and gold. Too much to carry. They buried a large sum of it, taking what they could back to their boats, 18 miles away, only to find their boats gone. Burying the rest, they built a raft to get back to their ship down the coast. Arriving back at their ship, Drake pulled a necklace of Spanish gold from around his neck and said to his crew, Our voyage is made, lads. Now if you like what you just heard, it's actually taken word from word from a site that I got the majority of my information for Sir Francis Drake, areasgray.com. Area Grey is an amazing site, very high quality and has much more to read about than what I can offer in a single video. The man that runs it is a treasure hunter by the name of Adam, and he has cataloged hundreds of treasure legends. I've gotten a lot of info from him and his site from other treasure stories like The Secret, On the Trail of the Golden Owl, and more. Go check him out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Discord. He loves to talk treasure, and if you do too, you'll feel right at home. So what does Uncharted have in common with Sir Francis Drake? Well, when you start the series, you start out as Nathan Drake on a boat looking for a lead coffin. And sure enough, Sir Francis Drake is legend to have been buried at sea in a lead coffin. And back in 2011, the owner of an American pirate museum had stated that he was close to finding Sir Francis Drake's real lead coffin. But sadly, because of legal reasons, he was no longer allowed to pursue said coffin. They narrowed down their search by managing to find burnt timbers of the Delight and Elizabeth, which were two ships sank shortly after Sir Francis Drake's death. It may be a long time before we get to find out if Sir Francis Drake actually did have a journal left inside his coffin that leads to an elusive treasure. So at this point, the real life accuracies ultimately end. There's nothing connecting Sir Francis Drake to El Dorado, as far as we know. So how about Uncharted 2? Well, Sir Francis Drake actually isn't even involved when in the search for Shambhala. So let's move on to Uncharted 3. During this game, you start out at a meeting with someone who wants to buy Sir Francis Drake's ring. But there's nothing anywhere that actually states that he had owned this supposed ring, but I guess if it was around the neck of a treasure hunter, nobody would actually know it exists in the first place. Later on, you go in search of Sir Francis Drake's voyage to Arabia having been commissioned by Queen Elizabeth I, which is actually accurate and true. Queen Elizabeth did work with Sir Francis Drake. He was actually known as her most renowned sailor, having obtained much of her wealth for her. However, this trip to Arabia most likely never happened. When he went on his first trip around the world, he followed Magellan's route, and they didn't go near that area at all. It would have added years to their journey. 
This is where the accuracies end as well, but we still have Uncharted 4 to look at. And once we've briefly gone over that, I'm going to tell you about the real life Cueva de Parita, or in English, Cape of the Pirate, where Drake is legend to have hidden, well, I'll tell you in a little bit. So in Uncharted 4, he actually doesn't have anything to do with Sir Francis Drake either. He goes in search of Avery Thomas II in search of Libertalia, a fabled safe haven for pirates where supposedly 10 pirate lords had pulled all their treasure together. And sadly, according to the scholars, Libertalia never actually existed, so there's no real life accuracies to that story either, but that's not all. I can't leave you having said, all of this is wrong and there's no treasure, because there is always treasure. Cueva de Parita is Spanish for Cave of the Pirate, and is supposedly a sea cave rumored to be located in Guentero, which is in Chile. The story goes that Sir Francis Drake was attacking the city, and he had plundered all of the loot from this town, and when he had finally gathered it all together, it was so small and disappointing that he just got so frustrated, he decided to attack the churches as well. So he goes and he attacks these churches and he gathers all the goblets together and he starts to urinate on every single one. Once he finishes, he gathers all of the loot that he had plundered and takes it to this cave where he chains a man up and leaves him there until they return. Now the other version says that all the gold and treasure he found was so vast that he couldn't take all of it with him. So he takes it all of this cave and instead he puts a sentry there and he's supposed to sit there and guard it until they come back. But in both versions of the stories, they never return. So that treasure is supposedly still out there. However, I just want to warn you, anybody who's gone looking and diving in search of this treasure has actually drowned. Also, if you managed to come across any goblets, I'd wash my hands after handling them. If you'd like to learn more about Sir Francis Drake, then go down to the description and follow the link to Area's Grey. I wholeheartedly believe in this site and the man behind it. And I'm not just saying that because he has me featured on his page. This site puts all others to shame with the overall quality and quantity of treasure history and legends. So go check them out. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video to help the channel grow and reach more people. I have an idea of what I'd like to do for 1000 subscribers, but until we make it there, check out this video here that YouTube says you're going to love. I'll see you there.